Uh, Okay, well, sorry for that. Um, okay, so this is joint work with the uh, Jeremy Sick. And, uh, um, okay, Graal tapping again. Uh, Graal tapping is uh, uh, an approach uh, to integrating uh, uh, in the same uh, um, programming language both uh, uh, dynamic typing and static typing. And it does so uh, in a seamless way, um, encompassing the full span, the full spectrum from uh, uh, dynamic, dynamically typed uh, uh, programs to uh, statically typed programs. Here we have uh, two uh, examples of the two disciplines, and the graph typing accommodates uh, both of them, so they both uh, check and run. And uh, it does so in some sense in the dynamically typed uh, program because uh, um, an annotated variables actually they have a uh, type which is uh, the dynamic type. And, uh, but also it accommodates uh, programs that are in the uh, middle of the spectrum uh, that are partially typed. And here we have uh, two, uh, two programs, two examples. And uh, here the function move by one accepts uh, a value, um, a parameter of type, uh, um, of dynamic type, and so it can accept uh, a point presents in the first uh, here. So it will tap check and it will run at runtime and everything will go right because here it fit the, the point as, uh, as expected. On the other side, uh, this, this uh, program uh, will tap check for the same reasons, but uh, um, here we will treat a uh, treat, uh, string as a, <clears throat> as a point and so we will go with an error at runtime. Uh, still, the, so still girl, typing rejects uh, programs when uh, we find uh, type error. For instance, here, uh, move by one uh, explicitly asks for a point. Here we pass a string, so at, um, at compile time, this program will be rejected. So we have uh, um, many benefits in using uh, Graal typing. There is uh, this migration of code. Uh, the programmer has the comfort of uh, adding and removing uh, uh, type annotations, and sometimes uh, uh, can avoid the burden of uh, making the compiler happy with the type annotations. and. Uh, and sometimes it's nice to uh, add uh, uh, stackity checking uh, in order to increase our guarantees. Uh, and guarantees are uh, basically as a propo uh, are proportional to the, uh, to the effort of the programmer. So we have many benefits and uh, the Im implication of this uh, is uh, quite, uh, <laughs> is inescapable. Uh, we have that uh, every language should be, should be gradual and we should work for it. So now, uh, this is a little bit of uh, an exaggeration. It's just to stress uh, the motivation of this paper. And uh, the motivations are that uh, uh, we should make uh, the uh, shift uh, to gradual typing uh, easy to uh, language designers. So actually this talk shared a lot of motivations uh, with the, our previous uh, talk. So easy to language designers, but uh, now uh, language designers, they take their language and uh, they may look a little bit like this. Uh, it's not clear how to proceed and go ahead. <laughs> Uh, in order to gradualize uh, languages. Uh, and, um, and uh, well, at least uh, uh, this was before Ron's talk. <laughs> now they have uh, some tool, at least uh, some formal tool. <laughs> this is nice. And, um, and uh, we have examples of experts gradualizing uh, uh, languages uh, for, for the past years. Uh, and uh, they have been doing this uh, for, for some time. And uh, these are very precious uh, resources for uh, language designers. But still, uh, there is a lack of a general approach. We need a general approach for that. So we are engaging in a research program that uh, uh, aims at providing methodologies, algorithms, and the software tools uh, for making the for the shift, uh, for supporting the shift to real typing. And this paper uh, is a part of this effort. So, but before going uh, uh, in detail of what are the, con the contributions uh, and the scope of this paper, let's have uh, some background on uh, gradual typing. So how do we gradualize languages? So um, 
we start from uh, uh, stat uh, the static, uh, uh, statically typed language. So even if uh, you are in, if, if even when injecting uh, Gerald typing in a, in a dynamically typed language, the language designer has in mind uh, a type system target. So we start from there. And uh, the Gradle uh, language basically interleaves uh, uh, the uh, types with the dynamic type. And uh, this stat the static language basic basically will have uh, um, uh, type system, and uh, maybe it's convenient even to be more concrete with some example. Uh, the type system will be basically a series of rules, uh, and uh, let's be concrete with the, the examples that we had uh, earlier. So for instance, uh, um, that particular uh, system will have uh, the ordinary typing rule for uh, uh, type applica applications. And from the static type system, we will we'll derive the uh, gradual type system. And the graph system will need to be such that, for instance, we'll need to, um, to allow this parameter passing. And intuitively, it does so because we consider strings uh, consistent to the dynamic type. So we, we, we will have a, uh, a usage of the consistency relation, which was first designed in the original paper on gradual typing by CA Kentata. And uh, we allow these two types uh, to be different. But now, uh, at compile time, uh, what we have is a checking, uh, is a check uh, that they are uh, consistent with the consistency relation. So a little bit more uh, in depth with the consistency uh, relation. Um, every type is consistent with itself. Every type is consistent with the, the dynamic type. And this flips over to uh, operators. So basically what we have is that uh, two types are consistent if they are equal uh, on the parts that are defined, that are not uh, Dynamically, that are not the dynamic type. And I want you to notice that still the points, we consider points uh, not consistent to strings. And that's why uh, in the previous example we were rejecting uh, the, uh, the program where we were, where uh, the move by one was asking uh, uh, explicitly for a point and we were passing hello. So we don't uh, execute uh, programs in the gradual. Uh, um, in the Gradle uh, language, we actually compile uh, these programs into a cast calculus. Because calculus will, uh, will look a lot uh, like uh, the original language, but uh, it will also have uh, a cast operator that we basically can change the type of uh, the operators. And uh, uh, the compilation is called the cast insertion procedure or cast insertion compilation. We compile a Gradle programs into the cast calculus. And the cast insertion, uh, uh, can, we can see with this example, with the example that we had uh, before. Um, Any time uh, the, type, the type system type checks an expression um, on the ground of consistency, we actually are going to, uh, um, we are going to um, mark this in, the, in its translation with a cast, because this will trigger uh, checking uh, at runtime. And, um, and, and the cast calculus will have an operational semantics uh, uh, that uh, will be very similar to the original operational semantics, but will uh, take care of uh, checking whether uh, there are inconsistencies at runtime, or whether everything went all right. But actually, we don't care so much today about the operational semantics because uh, the scope of this uh, of, my, of our paper is actually on deriving uh, the uh, gradle type system and the compilation to the cast, to the cast calculus. And uh, we are quite lucky in this regard because uh, uh, we have uh, uh, correctness criteria that can uh, guide uh, our, uh, our development. Uh, one of the correctness criteria, for instance, is, is that, uh, well, not every uh, gradle type system is good enough, but uh, it must be mm, monotonic with regards to precision. Without going uh, too much in the detail, this means uh, that uh, since this uh, uh, program is typable, if I remove this annotation, it still be, uh, it still uh, checks, still, still type checks. This is in a, really in a nutshell. And this is not the only uh, coordinates criteria. Um, there are uh, other coordinates criteria, like Ron was saying, and we are not going over it. Just, uh, just uh, let's say that, uh, so we have presented uh, this uh, criteria. We have collected in a paper at Snapple last year collected and refined this criteria. And uh, these are the, the axioms of a gradle tab in some sense, in the sense. For us, uh, the, um, 
the invariants the language uh, needs to have in order to enable the software engineering benefits of gradual typing. So this will be our goal. This will be a good guide. So finally, <laughs> the uh, contributions of uh, this paper. They are the ones uh, here in uh, green. First of all, uh, we have a methodology. Methodology for deriving uh, uh, a, the gradual type system. And also we have uh, the methodology uh, for uh, deriving the cast insertion uh, compilation. And uh, the methodology is a little bit uh, like an assembly line. It starts from the uh, static type system and uh, it's a series of steps um, that describes the operation that you have to do uh, at, at a certain point uh, in order to bring you and derive uh, um, the gradual type system. And basically what we did uh, um, is basically to bring up uh, the, um, the way uh, experts have been uh, gradualizing uh, uh, languages uh, for, the, for the past year for some time, and that was never explicit. <laughs> and uh, we did it in terms of this uh, methodology. So if we could zoom out, zoom in, just one, uh, one, one of the step, you will find in the paper, of course, an extended description of, uh, of the operations that you will have to do. Uh, the motivations behind the steps uh, uh, that will uh, hit a lot, uh, uh, will rely a lot on the coordinate, coordinate criteria, of course. We will have examples uh, on uh, how to apply the steps. And uh, also, we also provide, uh, for many of them, a PV uh, description. So we try to come up uh, with uh, a two sentence, uh, um, one or two sentence uh, description that uh, can uh, summarize for you uh, what uh, you need to do in, um, in that particular step. And actually, this uh, happened uh, a lot in uh, gradual typing too far. Um, every paper in gradual typing always cares to, to give you the guideline, for instance, that uh, uh, type equality uh, uh, is replaced by consistency. But uh, uh, you see, um, a guideline like this, uh, we have found that it is not enough for language designers to, uh, to, keep, <laughs> to, to take it in the start to gradualize new languages. So what we did is basically to be complete uh, in some sense, this sort of, uh, and having uh, much more guidelines uh, and more precise. And this is what the, the, uh, the uh, methodology is, uh, the methodology is. But uh, the beautiful uh, thing is that, uh, so we hope it's a nice uh, reference for language designers, but uh, the beautiful thing is that you don't really need the methodologies if you wanted to gradualize uh, your language because uh, we have the gradualizer. The gradualizer is uh, an algorithm that uh, uh, makes the uh, methodology completely uh, automatic. It takes uh, a type system, represented uh, somehow, and uh, goes over uh, pro formal procedures and uh, gets you the, uh, automatically the uh, type system, uh, the gradual type system. And of course, we have the same algorithm and a similar algorithm for the cast insertion compilation. And uh, so, but the main uh, um, question you, that you might have is uh, how we represent the type systems. And the first type system are simply logic programs. So here we have an example with the uh, function application that we have seen uh, uh, before. We, do, of course, don't use the turn style, but we use a predicate name. And this is, this is basically, if, you, um, if you're familiar with the logic programming, uh, this is basically a conjunction of formulae. And, uh, Below the line, uh, we have uh, basically, an this is an implication. Uh, this is just uh, uh, for you to have, uh, it's an isomorphic uh, representation. And uh, the type system will have uh, premises, uh, will have conclusions. And uh, the gradualizer uh, simply, simply takes uh, a logic program and uh, goes uh, over the rules. Uh, it, it does a lot of uh, metaprogramming. <laughs> uh, takes this uh, logic program and uh, goes all, all over the, the rules, uh, starts to inspect and manipulate uh, the uh, premises and the conclusions in order to produce uh, two logic programs that are uh, the description, uh, the, um, the logic program that defines the uh, gradual type system and the logic program that defines the compilation to the cast calculus. And the, the gradualizer uh, is, uh, serves also two purposes. Uh, uh, one, it shows that uh, uh, this is implementable, so that the gradualizing process actually can be automated. And for us, it was, uh, for, for us was uh, quite uh, a nice uh, thing, because we can give uh, uh, language designers, can be easy for them, uh, maybe with one click. And also, uh, the formal procedures are uh, formal enough 
that they can be subject to proofs. Indeed, what uh, we uh, show that uh, we prove that what the gradualizer produces uh, satisfy the satisfy the um, current criteria of gradual typing. Now I know that you're looking here. <laughs> Um, so, and this uh, gives uh, high confidence in, um, in uh, using, for instance, an implementation uh, of the gradualizer. So, uh, I know that you're looking here, uh, and that's because uh, mm, we cannot gradualize all the world. Uh, logic programs are, uh, the, the, the syntax for logic programs are super rich and so on. So, uh, we have to restrict our, ourselves. And uh, uh, we have a notion of well-formedness for a type system, and uh, it's just a syntactic, uh, so very decidable. Uh, checks and uh, maybe here what you need to know is that uh, we restrict type system for now to uh, simple type systems in the sense in the technical term so uh, pairs lists uh, um, exceptions but uh, not for instance uh, mm, universal types and uh, we have implemented uh, we have uh, the gradualizer which is in my github and now we can see a little bit how it works okay so here you can write your logic program, and we use a concrete uh, logic programming language, which is uh, the Lambda Prolog. Uh, you can write it here, or um, you can start from one of the um, one of the uh, type system in the library. Here are the, some of the type systems that we gradualized. And for instance, we can load the simply type Lambda Calculus, and the, here is the, the type checker for. Uh, for the lambda for the simply lambda calculus in um, in lambda prolog, and it's nice that basically it's, in, it's a nearly one-to-one -one correspondence uh, with the, what we write in uh, pen and paper, and it's as simple as this. We just uh, click the button, the button, and uh, here we produce uh, the type checker for the gradle type system, and uh, here the compilation to the cast calculus, and also the type system for the cast calculus. So basically. What we have seen here that uh, we have a new variable and then we check for consistency. And this is the, the tool that we have that automatically uh, gives for you. And uh, these are executable. Uh, they can be uh, interrogated for uh, typeability and compilation. And uh, mm -mm. so I want you to actually go home with something. <laughs> So uh, we will go uh, a little bit over just the two steps of, uh, of the methodology. Um, a little bit. It is the producer consumer and the flow discovery. So uh, for the producers, basically what we have here is that, uh, okay, uh, here this can be two different variables and we know that we need, we need to put, uh, we need to, to check for consistency. But actually we need to be uh, a little more um, um, specific than that because uh, uh, the gradle type system is truly connected with the cast insertion uh, compilation. And we will, need, we will need to know that uh, for the cast insertion compilation is the, here the uh, actual parameter that uh, basically is cast all the way to the uh, formal parameter. So it's a T2 that will need to go to, to T11. And uh, basically what matters a lot is actually the operational semantics. That's what we look. Um, for instance, uh, here we have the uh, beta reduction, and we know that uh, it's uh, E2 that has been substituted to X. So here, the type of E2, in our methodology, we say that uh, the type of E2 is, uh, flows into the type of the formal parameter. And uh, um, understanding, uh, and basically we need to, um, we classify the variables in the producers and consumers. Uh, for instance, uh, this is a consumer for the, uh, for the reason that we said, that it will eat, uh, basically, the type of the, these pro producers. And uh, the way uh, we uh, spot uh, these consumers and producers uh, might not be surprising. It's about uh, uh, the covariance and contravariance of type operator. Uh, there's a reason why the first uh, um, argument of the uh, arrow type uh, is a contravariant. It's because of this. Uh, um, it, this is the formal parameter that uh, takes uh, so uh, after this, we can apply the flow discovery step. And uh, if you look into the methodology, we will find something like this. It will tell you. <laughs> it will tell you just a simple line. In this case, uh, uh, producers flow to the consumers. XOXO. <laughs> and uh, so we apply this. And uh, simply, the, the variable T2 is going to flow into T11 with a flow premise. 
which is basically still checks for consistency, but uh, it's directed. And uh, uh, this is nice because, uh, so basically in, our, in this step, uh, we let emerge uh, this, uh, the, the flow that must happen. And uh, this will be um, useful for uh, cast insertion, because now in the cast insertion, we need only to, uh, to follow this. Uh, and this is uh, the uh, correct uh, cast insertion, indeed, where the uh, actual parameters goes uh, to uh, T11. And this is actually uh, what happens, and we will produce uh, what we have seen in the cast insertion for, uh, uh, for our example, where uh, uh, hello needs to be cast from string uh, to uh, the dynamic tap in order to uh, enter the function. So now what I want you to know is that uh, uh, things are, uh, uh, are different uh, if, um, if, uh, if we don't have uh, contravariance, uh, if things are different uh, if here we have uh, type annotations, and also if we have uh, com combinations of uh, these scenarios. And that's why I would like you to uh, read the, the paper, <laughs> where you can find the full methodology and the, the uh, details of the, of, of the work. So uh, thank you, and uh, happy gradualization. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you for your talk. Um, if I understand correctly, the, your gradualizer turns a type system into another type system plus uh, a, a cast insertion, uh, uh, compiles to a casted uh, calculus. Yeah. Um, that, I assume, would be related to the dynamic semantics of the original system, and I was wondering, is that somehow assumed or discovered by your gradualizer, or where do the dynamics come into play? Uh, so, so far, we didn't uh, um, address the dynamic semantics. Uh, Honestly speaking, we have uh, um, an exploratory. Um, um, uh, we, um, so um, the tool, for instance, uh, at some point, um, well, what I mean is that uh, we, we have uh, um, um, a tentative for that, uh, and we are working on that. That's that. But Thank for you. now, uh, now, what I showed is uh, and the, the content of the paper is just uh, the static semantics. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can you give a small example of a type system on which your gradualizer will not work? Cannot? Yes. Oh, for instance, uh, universal types, uh, system F. We don't uh, get, uh, but it's, uh, it's a work in progress, of course. <laughs> can, you sell, can you tell us briefly why? Um, so um, we haven't uh, looked uh, uh, that in detail. But the thing is that uh, for us, uh, for, for us, it doesn't even exist uh, uh, universal types. We want to catch uh, basically the full class of uh, uh, of this type system. So the, the type system that uh, is an abs the quantifi quantification. So in one in one one shot to catch uh, uh, universal types, existential types, uh, recursive types. Uh, that's the the generality we we are striving for. And uh, so we need the careful. Uh, <laughs> It needs a careful study uh, to catch all of them. Can you do something uh, with an object-oriented language where um, you may have to worry about co covariance and contravariance? So virtually, we can. Um, not, okay, uh, not in the, in the things that we find in the paper, but uh, I know that uh, uh, there are very simple extensions that I can uh, do any time to, to, uh, to catch that, yeah. Okay. Can you explain why you chose to go from typed to untyped? Sorry? Why you chose to compile a typed language into an untyped language. Because when I think of gradual typing, I really want to take some programmers who don't know any better and are like writing Perl code and then compile their code into Haskell or a type system. So why'd you go the other direction? Ah, um, oh, sure. Um, so, no, but even if you, if I understand correctly, um, even if you uh, gradualize a dynamic, so if you want to inject uh, um, gradual typing in a dynamically typed language, you have in mind a, a type system target, and you start from that. Um, but the type system would need to accommodate what's in the dynamic language. Sorry? The, can you, uh, can, the type can you? system would need to accommodate what's in the dynamic language. I might not know 